I've been measuring sand grains and I found that I can fit about 10 of them across one of those little one millimetre spaces on the ruler. In other words, these sand grains are about a tenth of a millimetre across. I wonder what would happen if we started multiplying everything by 100. If I multiplied the diameter of a sand grain by 100, I'd have one centimetre. I looked around to see if I could find something that size. The glass marble is about a centimetre across. Now, if we multiply that by 100, 100 centimetres, that's a metre. Guess what I found? Great big party balloon. That's about a metre across. If we multiply that by 100, we have 100 metres. Can you think of something that's 100 metres across? What about a soccer ground? Now, if we take a soccer ground 100 metres and multiply that by 100, we have 10,000 metres or 10 kilometres. You probably know somebody who lives 10 kilometres away from you. You've also seen things that are 10 kilometres up in the air. When jet planes pass overhead, they're very often at that altitude. Now, if we multiply that by 100, what do we have? We have 10 times 100, 1,000 kilometres. That's about the distance between Sydney and Adelaide. In fact, on this globe of the world, that distance anywhere on the globe represents 1,000 kilometres. Now, if we multiply that by 100, we have 100,000 kilometres. That is a quarter of the way from the Earth to the Moon. And you know as well as I do that astronauts have actually travelled to the Moon and walked on the Moon's surface. Now, if we take that distance and if we multiply that by 100, we have 10 million kilometres. Where are we now? Other side of the universe? Nowhere near it. In fact, we're only 1 15th of the way towards the Sun. Now, if we were to build a model of the Earth and the Sun and the correct distances between them here in the studio, starting with the Earth, we'd have to have a Sun which is 30 metres across, larger than the whole studio building, and it would need to be four kilometres down the road. Can't do that, so what we'll do is shrink the globe of the Earth. And let's imagine that the globe of the world is represented by this tiny ball bearing. Now, if that's the Earth, then we need for the Sun something which is about 100 times the diameter. And this table tennis ball fits the bill. But it's far too close. If we're to make an accurate model, we need to shift it further away. In fact, we need to take it across to the other side of the studio. The actual Sun is about 1.4 million kilometres in diameter. And its distance from the Earth is about 150 million kilometres. Now, you might say, that is enormous. Oh, no, that's only part of the solar system, the Sun and its family of planets. And the solar system itself is only a very small fraction of the whole universe. But that's another story.